Okay, I'm in the courthouse. We have a guy here. And what's your name? Andrew Vaughn. And you are? A photographer with the Canadian Press. How long have you been doing that? I've been working for the Canadian Press for over 23 years now. 23 years. And that's your gear here? That's some of my equipment, yep. Listen, do you feel guilty or you feel bad for those photographers about 60 years ago that were, had only one shot and that was it? Those are all my heroes. Why would I feel sorry for them? What do you think? How, how it went? How it... Well, they, um, they were people who were very careful because they didn't have a lot of opportunity to take 30 pictures when they only had an opportunity to take one. So they looked very carefully at every corner of their, of their range finder or their viewfinder. And they made very, very good um, pictures under very difficult circumstances. And it allowed a lot of us to look at their work and to appreciate their work and, and to develop some of the same work ethic ourselves. Uh, by looking at things carefully, even though we have the capability of taking hundreds of pictures, we're just looking for one good one, and that's what they were looking for. So they actually were a, a bit of an inspiration to, uh, to people like myself, and uh, to hopefully to another generation of photographers who should actually go look at their work and appreciate it. Where did it change from uh, mono camera to uh, digital? What year was that, you know? Oh, a long time ago, Henri Cartier Bresson, a French photographer, uh, started using a very small German camera called a Leica. It took 35 millimeter film. It was a small rangefinder, not unlike the point and shoot cameras that people use today. Um, and uh, Cartier Bresson knew that he could take pictures without disturbing people because the camera was, uh, it wasn't too conspicuous. It was small and uh, people weren't intimidated by it. And uh, he was allowed to, uh, with unfettered access, take pictures of the really regular daily life. life not unlike uh, some bloggers that we know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Who will mention no names? So, so no, that, so, so Cartier-Bresson, using the small camera, and other photographers as well, were able to record uh, daily life without, uh, with actually being part of the fabric of daily life themselves. And uh, when people saw the results and how great the pictures looked and, and how seemingly uh, different it was compared to the large posed portraits uh, from the large box cameras, uh, the, it caught on. Uh, and it was used uh, extensively during the Second World War um, and, and from that time on to, to do documentary coverage. Uh, when the 35 millimeter uh, camera became very popular, I suppose in the uh, late 50s, that basically revolutionized camera. There's single lens reflex, rangefinder cameras, tiny point and shoot cameras. And it allowed the average person to be able to take pictures uh, with, with ease and uh, quite affordable as well. And you've been doing this for over 20 years? I've, since I left school, uh, I've been a, a news photographer for 30 years. 30 years. And uh, you're always looking for the perfect shot. Uh, what's your worst experience? Been arrested? Been assaulted? I've never been arrested. I've been pushed around a little bit. But you, you try not to become the news yourself. You try to just to cover the news so you keep away. Uh, I've covered a wide range of, of um, assignments. I've been to the darkest parts of Africa with, uh, with the Canadian military in Somalia. Yeah. Uh, I was in New York City in 9-11. Uh, really? But I've been to a lot of joyous things too. And, and uh, those are the things that I, I like to think define what I do. People being happy, people experiencing life to the fullest, and, and, and uh, the high and lows of human emotion. I know you like to tell stories. You've got one minute, your last shot. What's the funniest story that you like to say what happened to you? Oh, minute. I don't know if I have any funny stories. Uh, or serious, I, but I, any I, do have, I do have one little quick one. I was in the Soviet Union in the mid-80s, and, and uh, when I was leaving, these local photographers asked if I had any supplies or anything I could leave them. So I gave them film and paper and all sorts of uh, paraphernalia. And as I was leaving, one of the photographers came up and said, here, have this little pin. He took it off his lapel and gave it to me. And uh, he said, it allows us, when we get stopped by the police for driving fast, uh, they let us go. And I thought, that's a great story. That's a, that's a nice little memento, and I took it. A couple of weeks later, I was back in Ottawa, and I was at a press gallery event and at the press club. And the, the, uh, the, the Russian ambassador was there, and I was, we were drinking and having some nice food. And one of his undersecretaries came up, and, and he saw I had my lapel pin stuck on my suit jacket. And he went up and said, ah, I see you can drive without intervention in Moscow. And I thought, ah, they weren't fibbing. And that was it. Thanks a lot, Andrew. All right.